Uh, welcome to the Presbyterian Church of Bella Vista on this balmy, sunshiny, uh, it's wonderful day. It's good to be in the house of the Lord worshiping together. Welcome to those of you, of course, that are here in person, and welcome to those of you that are worshiping with us uh, via live stream. I'm Reverend Dr. Ronnie Prevost. I've been switching out with uh, Reverend Joe Trapansky for the past few months we, since we've been without a pastor. And he'll be preaching for us next week, and he'll be leading us in our congregational meeting uh, later uh, this morning. And we appreciate Nancy Skinner serving as our liturgist today. Also, we want to thank those of you that were involved in decorating. I know it's not quite as extensive as uh, has, uh, been, uh, has been the case in the past, but it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful decoration for us. And we appreciate uh, that crew that came in, I believe it was Friday, and uh, got everything set up. We appreciate that so much. For those of you that are here, as well as those of you that are watching via live stream, remember the membership roles of the church are open. If you're interested in exploring uh, membership in this church, contact the church office. We'll be glad to put somebody in contact with you and walk with you through the process uh, and so on. With all of that in mind, Let's quieten our hearts, quieten our souls, our minds, as we listen to the introit and to the prelude and prepare for worship. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here. Until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice,
Please join me in the responsive call to worship. The heavens are being torn open. The mountains quit in God's presence. The face of God is soon to shine among us. Even the stars cannot hold God's glory. Let, Let us worship, worship God. God. We light this candle as a sign of the coming light of Christ, as the Lord has promised in days to come. The nation shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. Amen. Like a faded dry leaf that the wind blows away, our sins dry us up, faded and brittle. We are carried off by the wrongs we have done. Yet God loves us still and is able to restore and renew us with the water of life. Let us pray. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Save us, O Lord, from traps of our own creating, from fear that blocks the way of love, from worry that blocks the way of joy, from isolation that blocks the way of relationship, from structural injustices that keep the world bound. Forgive us, O God of hosts, until the stars fall from heaven and we live as people transformed. We offer our prayers in the name of the one who saves us. Jesus the Christ. Amen. 
The grace of God given to us in Christ Jesus strengthens us to the end so that we may be blameless when Christ comes again. Thanks be to God who is faithful and has called us into the fellowship of the Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. So with you. Please be seated. Let us pray. Gracious God, heaven and earth will pass away, but your words will not pass away. Your word stands forever. May our generation be attentive so that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we remember your ways and gladly do right, meeting you wherever and whenever you appear. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. The first reading is from 1 Corinthians 1, 3 through 9. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift. You wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Please join me in the responsive reading from Psalm 80. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock, shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim, in the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Stir our strength and come to us. Restore us, O God. Let, let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life, that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us.
Our second reading is from Isaiah chapter 64. We'll be reading verses 1 through 9. This is late in Isaiah, late in the period of the exile. The people are getting anxious, antsy. They're ready to go back. They've been oppressed long enough, they think. So let's pick up from there. Isaiah 64, 1 through 9. They are praying, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God beside you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you and your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember inequity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, we've lived in Bella Vista a little over five and a half years. Now, I'm not a golfer. No booze, that's, that's a good start. I'm not a golfer, so I don't know all of the golf terms. I have heard some over the years, but... One that I, I've learned since I've moved to Bella Vista, and maybe some of you golfers are familiar with it. How many of you have ever heard of a foot wedge? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Or a hand wedge, right? Well, I had not heard of that until I came here, and that may say something about golfers here in Bella Vista. I don't know. Another term that I hear frequently around here is Mulligan. Now, I'd heard of mulligan stew before, but I had not heard of a mulligan. It means, well, starting over, right? 
You get a do-over. You get another chance to use that hand wedge or the foot wedge or whatever it is that you're going to use. Well, starting over. We start over all the time. We start over, well, every day. You get up in the morning, we're starting over again. In fact, I remember years ago, Peggy and I were watching a news segment on TV. This was probably about 15, 20 years ago. And they had one of those little snippets where they say, here's a little health hint. They say, as you get older, what you may want to do when you get up in the morning to start your day, just stand up by your bed and just stand there and let your blood pressure kind of equalize. And I told Peggy, well, that's handy because what I do is I have to stand up and think, okay, what do I do next? <laughs> so I kill two birds with one stone. But we start over every day. We start over every week. This is the first day of the week on our calendar. We start over each 12-month year. January 1st, not far, we start off the new year. We start a new school year in August or September. We start a new business year, a new fiscal year, typically what, June, something like that, I believe. And certainly we think in terms of, well, Thanksgiving this past week is the beginning of the holiday season, starting over. And certainly today is the first day, first Sunday of Advent. This, is begin, this begins the, uh, a new church year. After Advent, there will be Christmas, then Epiphany, then Lent, and Easter, and Pentecost, and everything in between. And the wonderful thing is, Jesus is all about starting over. Grace, God's grace, is about starting over. Forgiveness. Is about starting over. It all leads to new beginnings. And starting over is our hope. And it is at the core of every one of our scripture readings this morning. In 1 Corinthians, we read about God providing and, and, and that God is faithful to start over again with us. In Psalm, we read in, in Psalm 80, we read about the, the plea for restoration, the, the plea with God for a new start. And starting over is the theme of most of Isaiah. Not just the messianic passages that we read, but all through the book of Isaiah. Because judgment in Isaiah is followed by restoration. It's, it's followed by starting over again. Even in Isaiah's call back in Isaiah chapter 6, where he has his vision of God high and lifted up, and he sees God in all of God's glory and all of those things, but holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, the seraphim calling out all those kinds of things. And he says, woe is me, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live in the midst of a people of unclean lips. But then one of the seraphim goes to the altar and gets a burning ember, and touches his lips and, say, and cleanses his lips, starting over again. And say, okay, now you're ready. Now get going. And then he hears God's call, and he goes and prophesies. He goes and preaches. Well, in, in this, our passage today, for them, the, the, the Jews, the Hebrews, the Israelites of this time, things could not get much worse. And they wondered, how long was God going to wait? And they're basically saying, God, don't just sit there. Do something. Do something. And they prayed that God would even uh, shake their world. They wanted things to change. Now, that, their, that prayer of desperation, that prayer of, uh, 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 of, of and that plea for, for a starting over, it was a prayer of hope. But even in desperation, we can have hope. And usually when we pray for things to change, we're thinking about somebody else. You have no idea what we preachers hear. Am I right, Joe? And I, I, 
I, I, I'm gonna, I love you guys. You know that. But I'm going to tell you, when you walk out that door and you shake the preacher's hand or, or touch your elbows nowadays, right, and you say something like, Pastor, I didn't like what you said there. About three people later, somebody's going to say, boy, you really told them today. Or if you say, preacher, you really told them today, about three places later, somebody's going to say, I didn't like that. Because usually when God speaks to us truly, it calls us to change. And if we are called to change, it means we shouldn't have been what we were and we need to be something else. So we always want to think about somebody else needing to change. Because sometimes we are, we are afraid of change. Because things are going to be different. We're stepping into the unknown. Kind of like going off the high dive the first time. Do you remember that? Or are we so old we don't even remember that? <laughs> I remember going off the high dive for the first time. It's at, at the swimming pool, indoor pool at Isleson Air Force Base uh, down at North Pole, Alaska. North Pole, Alaska is south of Fairbanks. Think about that. And I remember going off the high dive for the first time. I was about 10 years old. And I got up there on that high dive. It was 300 feet in the air. <laughs> well, maybe only 10. That, that was my first ministerial estimate, okay? It seemed like, and I knew I was going to like it when I hit, hit the water. I knew it was going to feel good. I knew I was going to enjoy the embrace of the water, being underwater, all those kinds of things. But I hadn't done it before. So that change was fearsome, and that's true with us. Well, you see, these people realize, as we read in this passage, God, we know we're wrong. We know we have made mistakes. So restore us, God. Change us. Make us something different. Because, you see, that's okay. That's part of, part of what our, our prayer of confession is all about every Sunday. Truly confessing, not just words to say in a prayer, but truly confessing, God, we have done wrongly. We have sinned. We are imperfect. We need to change. So now change us. Make us something different. Start over with us. And that's part of God's creative work. Very often when we think of God as creator, we tend to think of, well, that was a long time ago. That was long back. Like we read in Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was that form and void. All of that. God is always a creator. God is always creating. God is always starting over with us. And that's part of what it's all about. God wants us to yield to God so he can start over with us every day. We are imperfect, and that's where we start. And that's part of God's, not only God's creativity, that's part of God's imagination. Well, creative, creativity, imagination, that's part of the same thing all of whack, making something different, making out of something that wasn't there before, making something beautiful out of something flawed. That is starting over. That is God's imagination. That is God's handiwork. That is God's starting over. I've been writing uh, for the past almost two months now. I was invited by a publisher, asked by a publisher to write a series of Bible studies that they will publish next Advent. Okay. And uh, one of the passages is from uh, Colossians. And in that passage in Colossians, uh, uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 17, Paul is writing about taking things off and putting things on. And what he says is, take off these bad habits, these bad attitudes, these bad things you say, these bad things you do, and put on Jesus. <laughs> put on the good things. He's talking about starting over. Because we have attitudes, we have behaviors, sometimes we have speech and, and, uh, and so on that, that are not appropriate. But God wants to start over with us. 
if we are but willing, we do fail. We are imperfect. We do need to change our attitudes, our behavior. And sometimes our attitude is, God, I can't do that. I'm, I'm, I'm only so-and-so years old. I'm not what I used to be. You're right. You're not what you used to be. I'm not what I used to be. But praise God, God will make us even better. God wants to work in us and start over with us. God wants to, in God's grace, God wants to make us better than what we even were. As we face tragedy, as we face grief, as we face difficulties, failing health, failing capabilities, we need to understand God always wants to start over with us. With our attitudes, with our behaviors, it's never too late to start over. No matter our faults, no, no matter our failures, no matter our age, by grace, God is never done starting over with us. This Advent, I hope one thing that we will do is not just decorate our homes, decorate our trees in preparation for Christmas, light more candles on the wreath, though we will do that as well. I hope that we'll put off attitudes such as, I'm worthless. Let's put on, God, thank you. Thank you, God, for making me your child. Thank you for giving me another day, another week, another month, another year to live. Thank you for starting over with me. Let's put off, God, Here's my will, make it yours. Let's put on, Lord, not my will, but thine be done. Let's put off, God, I can't. And let's put on, I will, with God's help. You see, the child whose birth we anticipate in Advent, this child that, whose birth we look toward in Advent, this child grew to be Jesus, the Christ, who lived, who died, and rose from the dead, and assures us, all of us, each one of us, from the youngest to the oldest, no matter our failures, no matter our, our sins, no matter what tragedies we have faced or will face, what challenges confront us, God will start over with us every day. And that gives us hope. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now, as we sing our next hymn, hymn number 695, Change My Heart, O God, it may not be familiar to some of you, but it's a wonderful, very um, what we're going to do is we're going to listen. Look for the words as they're projected. Listen to the choir as they sing. Sing through, change my heart, O oh God. And they will, then after the choir sings through it, we will join together. And let that be our prayer. Change my heart, O oh God.
Join with me, please, as we read together our affirmation of faith adapted from the Confession of 1967. Out of Israel, God in due time raised up Jesus. His faith and obedience were the response of the perfect child of God. He was a fulfillment of God's promise to Israel, the beginning of the new creation, and the pioneer of the new humanity. He gave history its meaning and direction and called the church to be his servant for the reconciliation of the world. Please be seated. I share these prayer concerns with you. Of course, we want to continue to pray for those that are bereaved, Regine McKay and Bill Weldon and Becky Morgan, but also those who are hospitalized, Sonia Pohl and Marvel McCorney, uh, for those in hospice care, Barbara Stirrup, Don Rhodes uh, uh, recovering from surgery and for relocating Art and Pat Keller. We'll be moving to Houston, Texas uh, on Tuesday, December 1st, and they'll be in contact and get us their forwarding address and so on. Those with uh, we want prayer, pray for those that, with uh, chi uh, can cancer diagnoses Kathleen Litton, uh, Karen Schneider, Royce Neal, Jim Jennings, and Wilbur Schaefer. And then for those that are confined, uh, Sally Vandergon and Hope Kenny, Joyce Johnson, Suzanne Moore, Royce Neal, Muriel Cross, Bob McConney, Rochelle, Karen Prince, uh, of course for Barbara Stirrup, for Joy Phillips, Marvel McCorney, and Art as he continues there in, in, uh, in for the brief time until Tuesday. For extended family, uh, Chris, uh, Vicki Erickson's daughter dealing with uh, COVID, Yes, to Sam Mack, Janelle Stryker's granddaughter and grand, grandson-in-law with virus as well. Uh, Gerald Bev McDonald's grandson, Clayton, and son-in-law. Uh, keep them in your prayers as they continue to deal with various illnesses. For Matt Cowden, Bush and Gail Cowden's son recovering from the virus. And Joyce, Bill Dillman's son-in-law's sister dealing with stage 4 cancer. And of course, uh, Dr. Larry and Ingus Threshley. Um, and our missionaries in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. And so as other prayer concerns come to your mind and heart, uh, share those with the church, and uh, you can just call and, and let us know. Let's pray together. Most high God, your gifts of love are countless, and your goodness infinite, and you always give us hope. We come to you with gratitude for your great kindness, now trusting in your grace and love, and kindness, we pray that you would keep our hearts open, our minds open, and our spirits open to your presence. Especially we pray for those whose hearts are heavy with grief, for those whose minds are weighed down by confusion or depression, for those whose spirits are wounded by rejection or loneliness. You know all that we carry, Lord, even those things we would hide from others, and we ask for your healing grace. In the beauty and in the light of this world, remind us of your goodness. As we celebrate gifts of healing and good long lives, we give you thanks for reasons for joy. With every breath, fill us with your spirit. With every step, strengthen us with courage. Your love is the power we trust to start over with us and set us free. Merciful, loving God, for all those who are affected by the coronavirus, illness or isolation or anxiety, or grief, we pray that they may find relief and recovery. For those who are guiding our nation at this time and, and shaping national policy, we pray that they may make wise decisions. For doctors, nurses, and medical researchers, we pray that through their skill and insights, many will be restored to health. For the vulnerable and the fearful, for the gravely ill and the dying, we pray that they may know your comfort and peace. 
Heavenly Father, fill our hearts with genuine compassion so that we may freely share with others what we have so freely received from you. And accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debt, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and glory forever. Amen. God has enriched us in every way in speech, knowledge, and spiritual gifts. From the fellowship of Christ Jesus, we are sent out to share with thanksgiving what we have received. Now let us receive the morning offering. Now let us pray. Faithful God, we thank you that Christ is being revealed in every time and place until he comes again in the fullness of glory. Strengthen our testimony and spiritual gifts. Increase generosity in us, we pray, as we wait for the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we're going to have a, a call of congregational meeting, and I'm going to call on Reverend Joe Trapansky to call the meeting to order. Let us open our meeting with prayer. O oh God, as we have gathered for worship, we have given you thanks. We have listened to your word, brought to us by word and music. And now we focus our attention upon some business in the life of our congregation. We pray your blessing upon us as we will hear the report of the nominating committee. And we ask that you will guide us in the work that we do. In Christ's name. Amen. The purpose of our meeting this morning is to receive the report of the church nominating committee on those individuals nominated to fill uh, slots on the, on the session and on the board of deacons. You received an insert in your uh, bulletin this morning with information on that. But let's talk a little about the uh, purpose of our meeting today. What we will do, we will receive the report. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then you will have an opportunity to make nominations from the floor if you so desire. We will not close nominations at that point because we will continue this meeting next week. What we will do is, is uh, we will meet today and then on Tuesday, I believe it's at 10 o'clock, there will be a one call made from the church, which will give not only you but people who are watching us on live stream today, the opportunity to vote. That gives more people that opportunity, even though we have a quorum here to do it. Then next week we will come back and in the, at the end of our worship service, we will report on the results of the voting and then we will close the meeting. Any questions about process? The report that you have in your hand is the report of the nominating committee. And uh, individuals are here. I think most everybody's here today. You may not be familiar with them, so they don't know this, but I'm going to ask them if they would stand. Uh, for elders for the class of 2023, first Gene Nichols. Gene, if you would stand, please. And then David and Florence Ryder are here. Okay, you have a seat now, please. Then for the Board of Deacons for the class of 2023, Mary Hackleman. Mary's in the back there. Uh, Jen Halgram. Eugene McKay. And I don't think Sue is with us this morning, Sue Prattle. You can be seated, please. 
Sue and Ron do have some health issues. They're a little bit careful about getting out in public. Uh, but Sue is still able to participate in the board and was willing to do so. These are the people who are nominated by the nominating committee. Now, you will see listed there uh, Shepherd Group Coordinator, Historian, Clerk of Session, Treasurer. Those are not nominations. Those are for your information. Those are individuals who are appointed or asked by the session to serve in those capacities. So you don't worry about those, just the people who are here in pictures. Are there any other nominations from the floor? Okay. Uh, I think I was incorrect when I gave some purposes. We do close nominations. So is there a motion to close the nominations? Is there a second? All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, say no. Okay, these are people who nominated. You will receive a, uh, a uh, one call. Uh, the last word I had is Tuesday morning around 10 o'clock, and then we will continue this meeting next week. Thank you very much. Read my lips. That was the congregation <laughs> meeting. <laughs> We're going to start over. <laughs> right? There you go. That's all right. Thank you, Joe, for leading us. And um, you've done that before, haven't you, Joe? Yeah. Yeah, just a few times, I'll bet. We do have several announcements to make, so bear with me. Uh, first of all, Tom Hackelman shared this with me. Uh, he is leading in what's called wreaths across America, where they're laying a wreath on each veteran's uh, grave here in Bella Vista and the Memorial Garden Cemetery and uh, they'll be doing it on Saturday the 19th, is that right? Um, and uh, he appreciates uh, volunteers, so if you're interested in volunteering to help with that, see Tom Hackleman. Uh, also, speaking of volunteering, next Saturday uh, Presbyterian men will be doing our quarterly, is that right Bruce? Uh, roadside trash pickup, be 9 o'clock next Saturday morning if you, if you can be a part of that, please call Bruce Allen and he'll sign you up. Also, we are having a canned food drive for Helping Hands for Christmas through December 13th. Bring your donations, put them in the office lobby by the entrance door. If you prefer to write a check, certainly do so. Make it out to the church and put Helping Hands uh, there on the memo line. And those of you that are moderators of various committees of the church, your annual report is due to Ruth in the church office by Sunday. December 20th. Please submit your report via email to rlawson at pcbv.org. If you don't know, if you can't remember that, call Ruth and she'll give it to you again. Our Christmas Eve service this year will be, well, we're going to have a December 24th this year. But it's not going to be at 7 o'clock, it's going to be at 4 o'clock. We've typically done it at 7 because that way it was a little bit darker so we could have our, and enjoy our candlelight service. We won't be doing that this year, so we'll be having it at 4 o'clock. There will be communion and uh, with the little communion kits and so on, and the service will be live streamed uh, for those at home. So December 24th, Christmas Eve service at 4 o'clock. Are there other announcements that need to be made? But, but uh, yeah, well, go to that microphone, please. I'm Bud Clark. Uh, I'm the moderator for the uh, search committee for our pastor. And uh, I just kind of wanted to give you a kind of an update. Uh, basically, I want you to know uh, there couldn't have been a finer committee, not talking about myself, but the people I'm working with. Uh, we have uh, we prayed, I don't know how many times, and hopefully you are praying for us as well, and we greatly appreciate that. And please do not stop praying for us. Uh, we have come together as one uh, pretty quickly, and we have gone through quite a bit of material, and it's a process. I want you to know that. 
Uh, is it a fast process? Not necessarily. Uh, and we want you to know, I guess the key words would be patient with us. Uh, how long is it going to take? I can tell you when God tells us that uh, we have the right pastor, we've united together uh, as a group, uh, and it is uh, is aware to us as possible uh, that this person uh, is going to be the pastor for our wonderful church. Uh, we know that God is working with us. We know that God is working on the other end, uh, working with someone who is going to be seeing the materials of which we turn out that describes our church and, and what our concerns are, what our goals are, and to let you know that we are basically working it off of what you have suggested. Uh, there was a survey taken, if hopefully you will remember, of things in which you would like to see down the line here at, at the Presbyterian Church here. And the things that you uh, kind of would like to see in a, a pastor in, in our worship service and all. And we have taken all those to heart. And we are trying to uh, keep working at those goals and keep looking at them. And we have some wonderful discussions. And it's, uh, it's, it's uplifting for us. Uh, we continue to work and we'll just keep working until it all comes together. But please do not stop praying for us. Uh, be patient with us. And uh, I know God has already chosen them for us. He's just going to lead us by the hand and make sure that we uh, go to the path that brings us to that person. So thank you. Let's keep them in our prayers, certainly. Yeah, let's sing.
God is faithful. Are we? Will we be faithful? God starts over with us every day. So let us go into the world, letting God start over with us, renewing us, restoring us, gifting us, preparing us, empowering us to serve a hurting world. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Pretty clever on my part, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. 